I'm either gonna get rich. If I don't get rich, not rich in fact, let me paraphrase. I'm gonna get wealthy. And if I don't get wealthy, just no worrying it. Of health, maybe like working in the WHO. And then with that, I obviously want to expand access to healthcare services. But then also like, I'm just specialized in oncology. But I'm also gonna go into research so that I can know what to do to find a cure for cancer. And I'm not gonna do it all alone. Oh, there's that's a school. buy them they, they are more than a thousand reds but these ones cost more because these ones are beautiful <laughs> they come from mdf instruments they are Why not the cheap doing ones the so <laughs> but you can keep them in your room safe and lock them up <laughs> yeah and then when yeah. you do third year they are there for you you know you, you want to start okay i'm gonna choose the winner <laughs> okay so the point i'm trying to make Mm. I go to hospital. I do get pills yeah. that I drink for six months. It's free. Okay, cool. I have HIV. I'm dying. I do get pills. It's like urgent. But when I have cancer, where do I go? Go to a clinic. They refer me to a specialist that's gonna take six months to see me, and I only get consultation in like what every year, because that's how frequently the oncologist gets to the hospital. I live in the rural areas. They do not know what cancer is. I do not get urgent care. Yeah. Okay, there's this thing called Doctors Without Borders. You donate to it, but do you see anything that says Doctors Without Borders here in South Africa? No, but they say it's in Africa. But they say charity begins at home. So my people, I want to be an oncologist. I wanted to go into medicine because like I said before, I'm a state one cancer survivor. So I was lucky enough that my dad had made for aid. So I could be referred to a specialist urgently to get the help I needed. Because if I didn't, they said I had three months to progress into the next stage. But that provoked my problem to me. Not many people would be as lucky as I am to have that in the UK. I saw the many treatments, chemotherapy, how much does it cost? Roughly a million. A million. Where am I going to get that? How frequent do you know the name oncologist? I'm sure most of us are doing medicine, but we've never heard of oncology or like the. Like you know, oncologist, I can know that either. You know, there's so many disciplines into it. So the fact that I wanted to go into medicine is because I wanted to find a cure for cancer. But guys, Rome wasn't built in one day. That I know I won't achieve very early. Now, the six years after I'm done with my six years of study, I'm going to specialize in oncology. But I'm also going to go into research so that I can know what to do to find a cure for cancer. And I'm not going to do it all alone. I'm going to need all of you. I'm not going to do it. So the world would be different when I'm a doctor because I'm going to find a cure for cancer because cancer, I believe, is a silent killer. It's a topic that we have not normalized like HIV and all the other diseases, but it's something that's killing people slowly but surely. So when I'm a doctor, I'm going to join Doctors Without Borders. Like I said, charity begins at home. Doctors Without Borders, not for Africa, but for South Africa. And I'm going to make healthcare accessible to rural areas. It's not going to need a lot of money. I just need my mobile clinic. Shaco's got me covered, UCT, and I take them there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Set very high. 
At <laughs> <laughs> this point, uh, I'm not here to talk just so that I can get a status quo, but I just want to share my story. Uh, so I come from Bobo, and I come from a small village called Mulet. So, as you, as you, most of you can know, Renge, at villages, like, a higher percentage of, popul of the population is filled with, like, elderly people. So, it's the same case with, with where I come from. So, like, 70% of the people who come from my area, like, are elderly people. And the thing is, there's no access to healthcare. Like, where I come from, there's literally, like, only one clinic. And then the nearest hospital is like almost roughly 30 kilometers away. So uh, medicine has, hasn't always been like one of my first priorities. I'm also interested in things like technology. That's why I applied for computer sciences as one of my, my options. So I think what really pushed me towards medicine is the fact that it's actually two reasons. One of them, when I saw the need where I came from. I identified the need for what? For access to healthcare, and then the other one going. I had a father who has uh, diagnosed with diabetes, and if you guys know about diabetes, is that one of the things going? It makes your 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 your, your immune system to be weak. In a sense, that going, you become more and more vulnerable to different diseases. So as a result, you ended up having complications with his heart, right? So he had to go undergo surgery. He was put on the waiting list. He, and then he, when, he, when he finally got the chance to go for surgery, he had complications. And then unfortunately he passed away in 2017. So that kind of uh, instilled uh, sort of a passion for me to pursue cardiology and you know things like stem cell research. Because I feel like this issue of everyone having to wait on the waiting list, only to be answered like three years later, like it's not gonna work. So I'm trying to, you know, find more ways of generating sort of new tissues, uh, new, new ways of you know, making such a easy, instead of someone having to wait like three years to get a new heart. So my aim, my, my, my end goal, at the end, before, before I pass on, my aim, is to, is for, my aim is to sort of build at least three hospitals in each and every province. And I know when you listen to it, you may ask yourself, how is this person going to achieve something like that? Because obviously, a hospital, you cannot compare it to a surgery. You can you know, create it just like that. Like a, a hospital, you are going to need funding, a lot of things like that. Lena, at the moment, I'm, I'm not really sure of how I'm going to achieve that thing. But all I know is that medicine, it's not like the end of the road for me. One thing I know go ringing, I'm either gonna get rich, if I don't get rich, not rich in fact, let me paraphrase. <laughs> I'm gonna get wealthy. And if I yeah. don't get wealthy, just no ring it. I died trying to get okay. there. I thought I was gonna go there. So, <laughs> that is my story. And thank you for it. So that's why I'm studying medicine. Um, but in high school I was also very involved with like different leadership stuff. Because um, I really like leading people and like managing people. So maybe I'm thinking of like maybe also going into politics, becoming Minister of Health, maybe like working in the WHO. And then with that, I obviously want to expand access to healthcare services. But then also like what I'm really interested in is also trying to dismantle all the like racial prejudices and the racial biases that are pervasive in like medical, in the medical field throughout the world. And then obviously let everyone have equal access and while being fulfilled from helping people. Where will the money come from? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna speak to the entrepreneur here. <laughs> <laughs> because it's easy to say access to medical health. It's not, it's not cheap. Where will the drips, the plasters, the water, where will they come from, Ludo? You gonna speak to entrepreneurs? You'll be minister and look, look in South Africa now, you know? Only 30% of the population pays tax, are employed and pay tax. I'll speak to UCT, maybe they can donate some money. <laughs> <laughs> how different will the world be? So Ludo told us how different the world will be. Access to healthcare, blah, blah, blah. Anyone wants to take on another tape? But if they have to be from medical South, sorry guys, I don't have calculators. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is calculating.
and the winners are. Luna from <laughs> And this, let me tell you why uh, Dr. Mora selected the medical, the, med the health sciences student because he's a doctor. <laughs> and he said Luda went macro, um, bigger plan, da 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 da. So Ludo, Dr. Mora, Dr. Mora <laughs> is the one who selected the name. I, I was supposed to select the smoothie people and then I said, everybody. <laughs> I pulled off an opera. You go! You're going! You're going! You're going! You're going! You're going. You're going. You're going. <laughs> And then the second winner of the status quo. We have everything <laughs> The rural take impressed Dr. Mm. Mama. <laughs> Great. So, eh? all of them, the, all the ones who stood, who spoke, yes. I also do. Yes. <laughs> okay, you also want to go for this movie, Emily? Emily's <laughs> gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>